Lyopleurodon. Welcome to the many interpretations of Lyopleurodon, the very iconic pliosaurid that lived, of course, in the Jurassic period from the middle to the late Jurassic. This one is quite an interesting one because it's had quite the history in paleo documentaries and just paleo media in general. Of course, it hasn't had the most outstanding presence out there, but it's probably one of those creatures that's best well known, if not for the documentary that it showed up in, for things like this. We're gonna guide our way to Candy Mountain. Who knows how many times that clip will play in this in this video? Probably not too many, because I know it'll probably get old. But y you know. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. So of course we need to start where it all began: walking with dinosaurs. This is probably the most iconic appearance of the animal. It's introduced to us by first showcasing a Eustreptospondylus, and at first we're led to believe that the narration is describing the Eustreptospondylus as it's trying to attack like maybe something that's like a fish or something that's aquatic or something like that. That is what we're led to believe until this absolutely massive Lyopleurodon jumps out of the water, grabs our heroic protagonist by the tail, and drags him back into the sea. Of course, there's a lot of things that probably don't really make sense for something like that, but it is incredibly awesome. And how awesome is this design? This design is probably the most iconic design of this animal ever. So much so that many of the other designs that we see down like later on this list are going to obviously have a lot of uh, like inspiration taken from this design. And all things considered, it looks really good as Lyopleurodon. The skull shape looks fantastic. The way that those teeth look when they like interlock and kind of like jut out look great as the animal. It's got the four flippers and basically every little thing about this animal is perfect. Except for the size, of course. Yes, that is the elephant in the room. In Walking with Dinosaurs, it is portrayed as being a 25 meter long hypercarnivore, essentially, like the largest predatory animal to ever swim the oceans or just exist on Earth, essentially. Of course, we know that's not the case. Lyopleurodon sat comfortably at around 8 to 9 meters, with the absolute largest specimens possibly being up to 10 meters which is significantly smaller than 25 meters. So why on earth did that happen? Well, it seems likely, at least based off of the, uh, like the evidence book that was released with Walking with Dinosaurs, that this Lyopleurodon specifically was based off of what were possible Lyopleurodon fossils discovered elsewhere. Some of the measurements at the time were like a 20 meter long creature. Most now think that those measurements were dubious, and it seems likely that that wasn't even a Lyopleurodon. So, of course, now this reconstruction doesn't really hold up in terms of the size. If I'm not mistaken, it's also portrayed as being uh, like a little bit too late in the timeline. I think by the time this documentary takes place, it would have been extinct by then. But all things considered, it's a very, very, very good depiction of the animal. Like it does lack some things that we now know about it, like a tail fluke and whatnot, but everything else looks really good. It looks like a fantastic pliosaurid, and it's a great start to the list. Of course, I'll probably have the most to say about this one in particular, because this is the most iconic one, and it's the one that I was introduced to Leo. Like this is where I learned about the animal from, was walking with dinosaurs. So this one's uh, very good and very iconic, just of course with some pretty hefty inaccuracies, all things considered. Let's go ahead and move on to the land before time. Now, it looks like this one is also oversized. We'll get that out of the way first. But with that being said, everything else looks really freaking good. Once again, this looks like this looks like a Lyopleurodon. The skull shape looks really good. The teeth look really good. The way they interlock, once again, especially towards the front of the snout. The four flippers look, look fantastic. It once again does lack a tail fluke, but it has some counter shading going on. And it just, it looks really good. I don't really have too much to say about it accuracy wise, despite the fact that it's, you know, oversized once again. But of, of course, this is an animated series or animated franchise. So things like that are to be expected. But this might be one of the best looking sharp teeth uh, to come out of the Jurassic, or sorry, the uh, the Land Before Time franchise. Like, I am a huge fan of the way that this one looks. So that's like a, a great second addition to, to this list. And then we have the magical Leopleurodon, as it's called, from Charlie the Unicorn. I believe that's what it's called. It's a Leopleurodon, Charlie. A magical Leopleurodon. Um, of course, I never watched this, but this is where most people are introduced to Lyopleurodon. Um, and I have heard it many times. I made like, I think, two videos on TikTok about Lyopleurodon, and the comments are usually filled with it being a magical Lyopleurodon. And I, too, have like incorporated the meme into the into the video itself. Uh, what a random inclusion for something like this. It's like, oh, look, 
it's a magical Liopluridon or Leopluridon. Um, it's going to guide our way to Candy Mountain. That's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. But uh, once again, it does look good as Liopluridon. The head looks pretty good. It's got like a weird arch going on with its back, which, well, it's not too bad. It looks pretty good. It's got the four flippers. It is beached, the poor fella, taking some advice from the end of Walking with Dinosaurs, of course. And it's got those interlocking teeth. So everything looks really good. It's got an interesting color scheme going on, which I, I kind of dig, uh, really. So, you know, for its little appearance in Charlie the Unicorn, I think it's it's really good. And, uh, you know, this one is, I think, firmly within pop culture because of, you know, the, the very famous voice line of, it's a Leopluridon, Johnny. A magical Leopluridon. It's going to guide our way to Candy Mountain. I'm never going to do that again, but yeah. <laughs> and then we have Dinosaurs Giants of Patagonia. It has a brief appearance in this. And it is interesting. It does have some of the hallmarks of a Leopluridon, such as the interlocking teeth, the overall shape of the skull, and it's got the flippers. But the back flippers are huge, like incredibly long. Um, it lacks a tail fluke again, and it does have some counter shading, which, of, of course, counter shading does make sense for marine animals like that. I mean, walking with dinosaurs also had it too. And, you know, as I mentioned, land before time. So, so far, we're doing really good in that department. But the skull is incredibly flat. Like, it's very fascinating to look at. I don't really know <laughs> what else to say about that. It's just, it's incredibly, like, just broad and just flat and everything. And like, I, I don't know. It's very strange. But, uh, yeah, this one's not bad either. Then we have C-Rex, Journey to the Prehistoric World. This one also looks really good. It's got four flippers. I don't, I don't know why I bring that up every time, but, you know, with it being a pliosaurid, they did have four flippers. So it does make sense. And the color scheme does seem to be inspired from Walking with Dinosaurs. You have the black and white, which does look really cool. Again, we will be seeing that a lot, but those are just such iconic colors. It just feels like Lyopleurodon would have had colors like that. It also does lack a tail fluke. Um, and I've been mentioning that, that a lot, but, you know, with recent evidence, it does seem likely that Lyopleurodon did possess a tail fluke that would have looked similar to something like this. Uh, so, you know, a lot of these designs are going to be lacking something like that. And I think a lot of that is simply because it's a, a product for its time. I think it was a relatively recent discovery. The interlocking teeth look really good, and the way they kind of jut out in the front look fantastic. It gives a really gnarly and just terrifying appearance in general. And then we have Prehistoric Assassins. And once again, this is pretty much the Walking with Dinosaurs Lyopleurodon. Everything seems pretty good. Uh, it's got interlocking teeth. It's got the same coloration from Walking with Dinosaurs. The skull looks really good. It looks really on par. Four flippers. I got to stay consistent with that now. And it actually does seem to have a tail fluke. Unless I'm like looking at that incorrectly. But it does look like a tail fluke to me. So if it is incorrect and I notice it later, there will be a piece of text that will come up. If not, then... Yay, we did it. Then there's Extinction, Predator X. And, you know, I, I this might be Lyopleurodon, and it, I could, it makes sense for it to be. It looks like this. And it's very monsterized. The teeth are exaggerated on an animal that already has exaggerated teeth, which is crazy. Uh, the, the skull is a little bit more short, and it just it's stubbier in, in, in general. It's probably a lot closer in size to the way that Lyopleurodon truly was, I think. I don't really see much comparison of it next to other people but i do think that this is one of those you know one of those uh fun little monster movies that they have going on so uh a lot of the mo monster features are a bit more exaggerated gives it a very diabolical appearance then there's prime evil it is absolutely massive here too so it's much like walking with dinosaurs and line before time and all that uh and it looks to be pretty decent i think the skull shape is a little bit different from most other depictions we've seen but it does contain four flippers and the interlocking teeth so most everything looks pretty decent on this. Just again, the the it's just a little bit oversized and the colors don't really stand out too much. So I don't think there's really much of an influence taken uh, from, uh, from other media. But all around, I think it looks pretty decent. It's a fun little stylized creature. And honestly, I had no idea that Lyopleurodon was even in Primeval. So that was kind of like a fun little surprise right there. You get to see it like attacking a submarine, I believe, which is really cool. That's like really cool stuff to see. Then we have Dinosaur Train. Looks pretty good. It's still stylized for, for Dinosaur King because it's, you know, a different type of show. Uh, it's got more of like a blue coloration. It still does have counter shading, which is really cool. And the interlocking teeth are still present, including the ones that are towards the front that jut out a little bit more. So it has all of the traits that we attribute to Lyopleurodon. And, uh, you know, it, I think it does 
scream pliosaur, but in a stylized way. So I think that's that's another good one. And then there's primeval. So I'm very certain that this is a pliosaur. I'm not too certain if it's Lyopleurodon specifically, but I'm putting it here just in case. It looks awesome. It looks like Lyopleurodon, and it looks like the size might be a little bit more accurate, at least looking at him compared to Spear. Uh, it's definitely not 25 meters, which that, you know, is closer. <laughs> so that, you know, if it's not as big as that, then it's it's probably closer. Uh, but it has very awesome looking teeth, and the colors look really cool too. Skull shape looks fantastic, and seeing it go after Fang too, like fighting Fang a little bit is really cool. Like this shot in particular, that's cool. That is cool stuff right there. So I don't really have too, too much to say about it, but it's I think it's one of my favorites. I really do like this one. Now we have the Lyopleurodon from Jurassic World the game, and this one looks pretty good. Uh, it's got the four flippers. It's got some counter shading going on. The skull looks good. The body looks pretty good. It does lack a, t a tail fluke, of course. Um, and the, the teeth look pretty good, too. You know, it's got those very gnarly looking teeth. I mean, maybe a bit more of a, a thinner skull. That's um, that's adorable. That's the second time we've seen that in a Jurassic World property. Very fun. Of course, you know, you can give it more evolutions. And the more that you kind of like upgrade it, of course, I don't have it. So here's a photo of it. You get like more spikes and things like that. I mean, I think I can guess what it's meant to be. And, you know, it does share a few attributes with the real life animal. Judging from it just kind of like floating here in the middle of the ocean. It does seem like that it, you know, it's gone now. But it, it does seem like it might be closer in size to the real life animal. So very cool, all things considered. We'll wait for it to come back. <clears throat> so how's all your day you guys doing okay i hope so there it is <laughs> yeah ladies and gentlemen leo pluridon leo pluridon leo leo okay so now we move on to the jurassic world evolution 2 leo pluridon and, you know, I, I feel bad because I already didn't really like the Jurassic World Evolution 2 Deinonychus, and that was just last week. And now I have to say again that I don't really like this either. I don't know what happened here. Well, like, it's flippers, has spikes on it. It's absolutely covered in osteoderms. They really tried to make it look like a giant croc. Like a crocodiliform or something like that. They, they like, tried to make it look like that the the skull is a is probably a little bit too thin maybe not i don't know yeah maybe a bit uh, of course it, it does still lack a tail fluke and i'm sorry but i'm just in like I don't, I don't even think the colors can save it for me again i love most of the designs the frontier does but there are some that i'm just not really a big fan of are we about to see an animation i think we are that guy just like locked into place Okay, that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, no. Uh, you know, credit where it's due. Most of the skeletal structure seems all right, and I think that they are scaled down compared to the way that it was in, you know, Walking with Dinosaurs or, uh, uh, you know, other projects that we've already talked about. It's just, I'm not really feeling this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not really feeling it. I Like, giving it a crocodile back was certainly a choice, an interesting choice. Um, giving it these type of like claw things and this, I don't know. It's, it, it was all, it, it's all different. It's all very, it's, it's all something. It is all something. So yeah, that is the Jurassic World Evolution 2, Biopleurodon. And then in Ark, <laughs> this one's, this one's, this one's something. It seems to be, uh, I believe oversized, similar to other projects that we've talked about. Uh, it does have the four flippers. The head shape is a little bit different to what the real head shape likely would have looked like. Has the massive gnarly looking teeth. Lacks a tail fluke, but, you know, I'm probably to be expected. Uh, but I, I don't really mind it. It's kind of funny in a, in a fun way. I like how I like how the texturing of the skin looks. Um, it really does remind me of a lot of different Pliosaur reconstructions in that way. So, yeah, no, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of fun. I don't have too, too much to say about it, but I think it's kind of fun. In Primal Carnage, you see an unfortunate, I think, mutilated Lyopleurodon that is still very much the uh, Lyopleurodon from Walking with Dinosaurs. Same colors, same skull structure, same 
flippers, same body shape with that kind of hump that it has going on there. I don't know how likely something like that is. Like, I'm honestly not too sure with that, but I've seen that a few times with some reconstructions. Uh, but yeah, this is basically the Walking with Dinosaurs one, so by default, it looks awesome. <laughs> you know, I don't make the rules. All right. It'll make them. And there we are. Those are the media depictions of Lyopluridon. If there are any that I missed, be sure to let it let me know in the comments. Um, you know, there's a various different reasons why some of them wouldn't include on this list. Like, you know, in this one in particular, those are all of the ones that I had in mind and that I can think of. So there is a good chance that I I missed some. So be, be sure to let me know in, in the comments below. Anyway, that is pretty much all I have for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and have an awesome day.